let me answer this question and i think that this answer to this question maybe it will surprise you maybe it's gonna be an answer you weren't really expecting hey what is up welcome to the coffee wait no welcome to my wait no welcome to the cozy coffee corner with nikki critchlow you like that you like that i thought you might like that can you be gay and love God? Can you be a, a homosexual Christian? No, I do not think that my saying this is necessarily going to be like revolutionary or this is what the world needs is to hear my take. No. Um, but what I do know is that there is an influx and there is so much, so many lies just being pumped into cyberspace through media and what have you that I feel it is I feel that is especially important right now to be contributing to those and alongside those who are here to pump out if you will the truth the end of the day the truth is what sets people free that is what the word of God says. Who would I be to be withholding truth, i.e. withholding freedom from somebody who doesn't actually know what it is or what it actually means or the heart behind the truth? Truth is always derived from a place of love because truth came from God, who is love, the creator of the universe, the one who breathed and stars appeared. Yes, him. He is love. They're synonymous. He's not just a loving God. God and love are literally the same exact thing. There's no separating them, period. So anything that you hear me say today, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, go ahead and follow up with the word yourself. Go ahead and double check and verify before you be listening to me. Okay, one more swig of coffee. Let me answer this question. And I think that this answer to this question, maybe it will surprise you. Maybe it's going to be an answer you weren't really expecting. However, sorry if you just heard me as well. Uh, however, this is what I, to the best of my ability, by researching and praying, listening to others, reading the Bible, this is how I would answer this question. Can you be gay and love God? Can you be a homosexual and be a Christian? Um, in one way, I want to answer, yes, you can. And then the other side of the token, I want to say, no. You can't. And before you start punching me in the face in cyberspace, let me first give this disclaimer, which it's not even going to matter to half of people watching this because you still don't care and you think that I'm mean and I'm a bigot and all these things simply because I am a follower of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Woo! Um, but I will say this. I do not hate gay people. I do not hate homosexuals. I do not hate anybody who is a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Absolutely not. I have friends, even family who are involved or have been involved and I, my love for them has not changed. My desire to want to just hang out with them and not convert them, but literally just be around them hasn't changed. But again, this is me speaking truth in love because truth equates to freedom. That's all I'm here to do today, okay? <laughs> if you are asking, if you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ because you have come to know his love in a mind-blowing, life-changing way, but you have been practicing or identifying as a homosexual for the last five days, five minutes, five months, five years, 50 years, whatever, five millennia, whatever, um, the answer is a, an unequivocally yes. You absolutely can come to know Jesus and absolutely be in a relationship with him, period on that. The grace of God is so much more incredible than we can truly explain and express. There is a reason that it is called amazing grace because it is amazing. You could have done the worst of the worst things or identified with this or that or freaking done this or whatever and if you come to a place where you have a real revelation of god's love and you accept jesus as your savior he will fully accept you right then and there and meet you where you're at no questions asked jeffrey dahmer yes that man is in heaven that man accepted christ as his savior oh but you don't know if he really accepted him nikki you don't really know he could have been uh, having a manic episode when he accepted christ jesus you know what i can't judge his heart i can't judge anybody's heart actually but what i know and i've seen tapes where he has and there is evidence that he has accepted jesus as his lord and savior and, and i've come to since come to believe that uh 
that the Lord Jesus Christ is the true creator of uh, the heavens and the earth and uh, I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. He has repented from everything he did. That man is in heaven right now with Jesus like praising the Lamb of God. That is how amazing God's grace is. He can take anybody from what no matter what your past is and make you clean and new in a moment. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and it's it's done. It's yours. So yes of course you can be have identified as a homosexual and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and come to him without trying to change yourself first like duh don't even try he will help you change and keep that in mind as i continue talking in matthew 28 jesus himself says come to me all he didn't say come to me some come to me if you've already figured everything out and you already get what i'm about to tell you come to he said come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest and he goes on to say that his yoke is easy and his burden is light like that is the jesus that we know and love how many people are tired exhausted heavy laden burdened by anxiety burdened by depression burdened by all of these things that everyone apparently has today like he says come to me my yoke is easy and my burden is light that is the jesus that's the real jesus okay it also says in romans 1 for i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god for salvation to everyone everyone anyone who believes so on the other hand on the flip side if you are asking if you can flippantly practice homosexuality, support it, be a part of the community, preach it, teach it, be it, and be a Christian, this is what the Bible says, okay? The Bible says, don't come for me. I'm a messenger, okay? I am literally a messenger in this situation. Check your Bible. If you don't like what it says, complain to God, okay? It says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You are made holy. You are made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. That's what makes us right. The Bible is super clear that homosexuality, amongst other things, is a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. It said greediness is a sin. Sin in its most basic definition is an offense against divine law. I was listening to this really great interview between Beckett Cook and he was on some show and he was a homosexual. He was super gay and he had been gay for most of his life. And from what I understand, he came to Christ like in his thirties or late thirties. So he had been practicing for a long time. Um, and his story is amazing. I highly recommend you go and listen to that. Um, and he actually has a book out called Change of Affection, which is I've never read it. I was going to say it's amazing. I've never read it, but it sounds amazing. And I listened to a story. So I'm, I'm just putting two and two together here. That it's probably an awesome book, especially if that's something that you go through or have been through, or, you know, someone, I would say, check it out. But he puts it like this. He said, when he, he said, when he first came to Christ, he was talking to a friend. He had just became a Christian. He had just given his life to Jesus. And his friend said, well, so what does that mean? You're a gay Christian. And he said, you know what? Just because I may struggle with same-sex attraction, I'm not going to call myself a gay Christian. I don't identify as gay anymore. I just identify as a follower of Christ, period. And I love the point of like, there, there's no such thing as a, a, as a gay Christian. You're just a Christian. If you really know Jesus and you really want to follow him, you're just a Christian. Stop identifying with the things of your past. Why would you identify of something that you've struggled with? Why would we identify, attach that to our new identity? I'm not going to go around saying, well, I'm a gossiping Christian or I'm a lying Christian or I'm a, I'm a gluttonous Christian. I'm just a follower of Christ. 
I just love Jesus and I am not perfect, but I'm just a follower of Christ. And at the end of the day, if you are someone who has or currently does identify as a homosexual or a lesbian or you're part of the LGBTQ plus community, there is no hate and there is no shame. But I'm trying to, to say to you and offer to you a truth that I have come to know in my own life that has changed me in ways I could never fully communicate on a YouTube video. Um, I just want to at least give someone the opportunity to dig into that or to know that for themselves. I know another lady, I used to go to church with her and she was a lesbian. She had been married for, I don't, I mean, I know it was more than a decade. It was like 15 years or something. She was married to a woman for 15 years. I used to work at Chick-fil-A in my hometown. I worked there and every Thursday night, her, her wife and a bunch of kids would come in and she honestly looked like a man. Like I 100% thought it was a man. And then I looked a little bit further down. I was like, oh, you're not a man. You're a woman. And so I remember seeing her in Chick-fil-A and I would in like, I'd be like, Lord God, I don't know. That seems kind of impossible. I don't ever see her like be, I could never see her not being a lesbian because she's like she's just so infiltrated into that um but God you can do anything so I pray for her I pray for her salvation and I would just like pray for her in my heart not saying I'm the one who changed her by any means I'm just saying it literally seemed impossible but I would still pray for her that woman that lesbian woman who was married to someone for like 10 plus 15 years whatever is now married to her high school sweetheart which is a man. She is on fire for Jesus. She loves him. In Philippians 2.12, it says that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That's because it's a process. We're working it out. It's not a snap of the fingers and it's done. It is a process and that is okay. On the other hand, yes, it's okay to struggle, but you don't want to stay in your struggle. That's why it's good to have accountability and all these things and prayer and worship and whatever. It does say in Matthew 5, Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So yes, it's a process and we're working out our salvation. We're not quite there, but our aim at the end of the day is not changed. So, and I think this is the last thing I'll say, because I really don't want this to be super long. I would never want someone to come to Jesus simply because somebody told them that, well, you're gay and that's a sin. And if you don't change, you're going to go to hell. So you better just like quit cold turkey. Absolutely not. And when I think about my own self and my own life, what drew me to Jesus was not my lack. What drew me to him in a greater relationship with him was his abundance in spite of my lack. The Holy Spirit is the most powerful being on the earth and he lives in people who receive Christ. When you have that power living inside of you, there's nothing you can't do and there's nothing that you can't overcome. So I want this to be more of an encouraging message. I don't want anyone to sense that I'm communicating hate, which I know people will no matter what I say. It like doesn't even matter what I say, but it's fine. I love you. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I love you. I'm not doing this because I hate you. Why, like, why would I do this if I hated you? Uh, no. If you guys have any suggestions or questions or whatever you would like to discuss, you would like me to discuss, us to discuss in our little coffee talk time, please leave them below. I like tackling hard questions sometimes, but it is hard, but it's necessary. So I'm doing this because it's necessary. May God bless you and keep you grace and peace. Jesus himself says, come to me all, excuse me. <laughs> that was real cute. Real cute. You like my cozy candle? It's literally called feeling cozy because I'm feeling cozy. Um, Matthew.